you for everyone that came, that came out tonight. Um, as you know, we are doing community chats, and so there's always one in the night, and we're gonna have one sometime next month, and it's gonna be during the day to allow for our seniors and people who work second shift, first shift, second shift, and people who may just have more free time in the day. So that is something that we're doing that allow for everyone. It, it looked very similar, um, but we just wanna offer as much possibility for community to give us feedback and input. So let's go over the ground rules. Actually, before we go over the ground rules, let's introduce the staff and the board members who are here. So my name is Liliana Reyes. I use she, her, her pronouns. I'm the interim executive director. I'm Kyle Taylor, the development coordinator, and I use he, him.
Yeah, so um, again, to make sure that the process is as fair as possible, there really is not an interaction with the committee currently. Um, however, what I can share with you is that the committee is still um, uh, on, on schedule to their milestones. So the next milestone is to have all resumes for all parties interested to be submitted by um, September 4th, and, and they're still on target for, for that first milestone. And the draft is becomes really Yes, so everything's on the website. I think there's several websites that have uh, that have the description and the position outline in addition to the affirmations website. And if anyone is interested in the in submitting the resume, they can do so directly to Cheryl Zapp. Um, and her contact information is on the affirmations website. And if you need your contact information, let one of us know. We can give it to you for free. Anyone else? announcement about our SAGE fundraiser coming up on the 28th. It's going to be here at Affirmations. $25 in advance, $35 at the door. We are going to be serving beer and wine and food. So they have a license to do that. And all being glasses, won't be in containers. But um, anybody that comes in, you know, wants to come in and have food and drink on the 28th, they can. Yeah. And you can buy tickets actually through Kyle. Um, on our website, both Angie, the president of SAGE, Paula, a board member of SAGE, will be speaking. I'll be speaking as well. So if you're able, what day is that? Is it Thursday? 20, Tuesday. 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 Tuesday the 28th. Awesome. Anyone else? I'm not even sure of the time. <laughs> Six, Six, right? Six to 8.30. Six to 8.30. Yep. Yeah. In this room. Yeah. <clears throat> and they'll be, it'll be a pretty cool, pretty cool event. So the strategic plan was created several months before, and so anytime there's a change in leadership, there isn't a change in the, the actual strategies, but the tactics. Mm -hmm. And so if we're saying we're going to do more community outreach, what we're doing might change. So while we're in limbo, we are looking at not just strategic plan, but the development plan, the communications plan. We are on target with everything that we said we were going to do as far as outreach, as far as programming. Um, as far as getting our name out there. So we're doing pretty good. There are some tweaks that are happening as we're figuring out along the way though. Is there any staff or board that want to talk more about the strategic plan? Yes, yeah, so in terms of the strategic plan, the strategic plan was actually approved by the board in 2017. And one of the things that we're doing with the new board is establishing and resurrecting committees that will help support that particular, uh, the, the, the strategic plan that was adopted in 2017 with the support of the staff. Um, so once all of that kind of um, gets matures, uh, we'll be able to post all that. So the target that um, the board has identified is that we be in full swing by, by the beginning of 2019. And um, so if you were at the last board meeting, uh, we actually approved all of the committees for this board tenure. And we're actually working in a process now to be able to identify what the charters and uh, um, the plans are for those particular um, um, committees are that support the strategy. And our hope is to lay out a preliminary uh, outline, hopefully, um, in September to vote on it by December so they are in full swing in, in January. So again, um, being able to support what the bar laws require from us and be in the, uh, supporting the budgetary policies that are in place here at Affirmations.
So when the board does something or when the board requests something, um, we always look at the bylaws. So you may have noticed at the last board meeting, everything that I was about to do or everything that I was about to request, I referenced in an article in a section in the bylaw. So everyone understands why different things are being done. In regards to changes to the bylaws, uh, that's done through the governance board, which is made up of three board members. And that particular uh, committee is the one that decides um, if it's necessary to review um, uh, bylaws, update the bylaws, and so forth. One of the things that I know that I'm interested in is updating the bylaws to be more reflective of what the community wants and be more reflective of what of the community that, that, we're, that we're currently supporting. Um, at the last board meeting, there weren't enough board members to um, officiate or to enact the, the governance board. At the next EC meeting, I know there's going to, there's going to be a request to add an additional one or two board members to make sure that that is an active board to be able to review items like this. So again, the bylaws dictate how we operate as a board and as an organization. And um, I have the bylaws with me, <laughs> but it is, it, is a, it is a section underneath uh, the, the governance board. Yeah. Did, did I answer that? There is um, the governance board reviews the bylaws and determines if something needs to be updated. Is there any input from the community? Yeah, so the community always has access to, to the board, right? Through community chat like this, or through um, through the board meetings where, uh, again, the community has an opportunity to speak directly to the board, to the staff, um, and so forth. So if there's something that a community member wants to bring up, uh, you may have noticed that we're starting to be more diligent with our business minutes and being able to address those business minutes at every single board meeting. If there's something that needs to be addressed or something that needs to be brought up, definitely bring it up at the board meeting so we can actually lock it into our business minutes and it's reviewed by the appropriate committee. That would be the process to, to, um, to be able to address um, the bylaws directly. What's unique about the bylaws, the bylaws specifically say that the governance committee is only made up by directors. So that's outlined by, by the bylaws. But again, the opportunity for the community to speak directly to the board is through the community chats like this and through the board meetings. I specifically um, think that the board meetings is the most appropriate because business minutes are taken. And again, the board moving forward is being very diligent to make sure that we address all of the comments that are made at each uh, by the community and that we address every action that's requested. Yeah. And again, the next board meeting is in September, uh, September 26th is our next board meeting at 630 in this room. Is there anywhere we can find a copy of the bylaws? Yes. So the bylaws are actually on the Appalachians website. Um, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, you go to our, um, our talk, um, about us, then go to um, about the board, and on the, on the bottom of that page, there's bylaws, there's a link to the bylaws, so you click on that, and it opens up a PDF. And I actually have a copy, I have a copy of, the, of the bylaws with me. So if um, you need a print on it, you can go upstairs and get a copy, and I can give you a copy of that. Well, I can find it online. Yep. yep. Why waste paper? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Why rent paper? Anyone else? Good question. Are you sure? Great. So now we're going to do some community center updates. So you're aware of what's happening in your community center, some things to be on the lookout. We heard uh, the SAGE event. Um, and so, so we're going to do a few updates. So program updates. Ian, our youth coordinator, is spending a whole week in Traverse City. I'll be joining him Saturday. It is the largest LGBT or queer youth conference in the state of Michigan. Um, there's 50 or 60 youth that come from all over, literally up north, everywhere in Michigan. Um, who identify as queer or trans, and they come to the space. There are sessions that happen. Ian is a facilitator. I'm doing facilitation for some tobacco and some health stuff with the youth. So that is run with Equality Michigan, so we've been partners with them for a while. Um, we're going to be working with Ruth Ellis, their Trans Just Us retreat, retreat which are for trans women of color. Um, and so we're working with them to do um, workplace scenarios, workplace development. We're working with them to address mental health issues with trans women of color. And so we're helping to reshape some of their programming. Um, some other, are there anything program-wise that you want to share, Kevin? Um, Any updates? We 
looking at an alternate voting slot last week, and we have a ton of stuff that can go to the event that you're talking yes. about. Also, Transit System Call Project will be taking stuff to the gathering that we have for during the month. There's a whole plate that is just waiting to get yeah. to the so the all gender clothing swap was clothes donated and a lot of it was gifted by one of our members who passed, so Rachel's wife, she was a two-spirit uh, native woman, um, and she uh, has beautiful clothing and, and other donors who donated their clothes and we give clothing out for free. Literally people come in, grab what they want and take it. There's no bureaucracy, there's no paperwork. It's very similar to how we're gonna be starting the warm and cozy coat drive that we do in, from November to I think mm -hmm. February. And what it is, is we donate, anyone who wants to donate, hats, gloves, scarves, we set it out, people come and grab it and take it. We usually give away between 1,500 and 2,000 coats, gloves, scarves. To, we give away usually like two or 300 to schools, to churches. Um, Jaleesa Abad from Wrigley's does a trans uh, Christmas thing and we give 100 coats there. So know that that's coming, we do it every single year. So if you wanna donate, if you wanna have people come, and get it, definitely talk to us about it. We actually met today. Um, we are going to be reaching out specifically to SKK to talk about a Senior Appreciation Day that we're doing in November. Um, and that would look like food, that would look like all kinds of, well, it, you're gonna help us figure out what this looks like. <laughs> so we wanna do it, we wanna definitely show that our LGBT seniors, especially in this area, especially people like Senior Coffee Clatch, we wanna honor them and say thank you, feed you, give you a few things to take home, um, but we were, we're gonna be looking to you to help us figure out some big ideas. I'd like a puppy. Sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary yes. wants a puppy, we're gonna get Rosemary. That's the state of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, perfect. Right. So those are kind of things that we're thinking about. Um, we're also strengthening our relationship more with Flint, with just not just the water. Um, so Flint is working on creating change, but they also got a primary care provider and they want to work with us to, to narrow, especially HIV between Flint and Pontiac and Detroit, because there's nothing north of Detroit until you get to Flint. So we're working with them a lot, actually, and they're really helping us kind of strategize on a statewide initiative. Um, any development things, Kitty? Yeah, I'll come up there. So okay. We'll make everyone turn around. Let's switch. You know you're on camera, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi to everyone again. I'm Katie, Development Director, so thank you all for coming out. My quick little notes, but thank you. I was going to talk about the SAGE event on the 28th, so what he said, come on out. Um, prior to that, just a couple th quick things that we are doing here, fun things. Um, on the 25th, Saturday, the 25th, we're having a Golden Girls Trivia Yay. event. Yay, exactly. And I know like half of this room has already signed up. So <laughs> if you are interested, you probably need to sign up sooner than later. Space is limited, and that's for the trivia company and the size of this room. And it will sell out. Teams are two to five people. It's 25 a player. And trust me, because I'm not that well versed on Golden Girls, so I will be working it. We have some really fun prizes and things going on besides the actual trivia. And the competition for best team name is really intense and it's really awesome, the name. So we'll share all that after. But again, if you're interested, please come. Really, if you're a one person that like, I want to do it, but I don't have a team, talk to us and we'll put you on yeah. the team. Yeah. But again, a couple people over here are saying they're going to win. I know someone back there already told me that his team's going to win. So I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the day. Um, but like I said, three days later is the Sage event, which will be wonderful. You mentioned beer and wine. We will have bouncers at the door who seem to get a little rowdy. But there's um, other things going I'll on. I'll take one drink. <laughs> we'll monitor that. So, but again, if you're interested in that, I would um, suggest buy your ticket online because we will charge a little bit more at the door, so keep that in mind. And the last big thing is Fall Fling is coming up October 20th. Um, if you've been to it in the past, it's usually a little earlier in October. We've switched it a little bit. So because it's later in the year, we're doing costume optional, which is going over so well. Oh my gosh, every time I tell somebody, people get excited. So what the board has decided for um, anyone who comes in costume, you're going to be entered in a special raffle, and it's going to be a really cool prize for that, too. So I'm excited just to see that. But if you are interested, we do have it live on the website. The invites aren't going to go out until the beginning of September, but you can buy your tickets. Sponsorship, if you know anyone who wants to buy ads, 500 for a full page, 250 quarter, and only 100 for, I'm sorry, 
250 for half, 100 for a quarter. So if you know you have a business, if anyone's interested, please let us know. Our dear friends at Wolverine Printing always print the book for free, and they tell us, make it big, so let's make it big. And then the last thing is, Kyle does a great job, I'm gonna embarrass him for a moment, but every month we have something going on, but if there's a place you like to eat, or a drink, or a hangout, or a haircut-a-thon, or a bowl and hot, <coughs> somebody's interested in a third-party event that would like to you know, have money come back to your center, please let us know. We are always, we like to have a variety. You might want to go eat Greek food. You might want to not eat Greek food and go to Axel. You know, so we try to have a variety. And we are looking specifically for a couple places. Is it October 11th? Is that National Coming Out Day? We want to make sure we're doing something specifically on that day. So we would welcome some input. So I think I've covered everything. Yes, OK. Any questions on development stuff? You ought to have a contest at Golden Girls for the best dressed lookalikes. Oh, we are. Oh, I think. Okay, okay. so a couple things we're doing. Besides you come in and you actually, first, second, and third place will win um, prizes. Thank you. Big thank you to Ferndale Family Pharmacy. They are sponsoring the event, and we love those guys. But in addition, we're going to have some fun little giveaway prizes. We're having best team name and best dress, whether it's a team or an individual. And the prize is mimic Golden Girls. Yeah, and then we're doing a raffle, and while it might not be a specific Golden Girls prize, like one of the episodes, Sophia got hit in the head at a baseball game, so we have Tiger tickets. And I know the Tigers aren't fun, but the tickets are on the dugout. So for you, even if you're not a big baseball fan, it's kind of cool to sit there. Then, you know, Sophia's from Italy, we have an Italian basket. Our friends next door donated, and we added to it. So. We're doing seven of those packages because there are seven seasons. See, I'm learning so much of my knowledge these days. Um, you guys are laughing, but it's been intense around here lately. <laughs> um, so we're making it really kind of fun thing like that. And like I said, in between things, we're going to do just some fun raffle ones. And right now, Anthony, who just walked in, but Monspot and I are the only two that really know what those prices are. So it's just, it's going to be fun, I think. So, so yeah, if you have I will be there, there, but not as the interim ED. I am on a team. Yes. Heather and I will be here as your lovely staff that will control the crowd that day. But anyone else is there for quarters, uh, they're not staff that day. So, any other questions? All right, well, thank you. And again, if you do think of things or you're somewhere you're like, wow, that's a really cool idea, just let us know. We're always looking for different things too. So, thank you. And I'm happy to hear that you've all grown the room. You guys are a loud, happy people. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also keep you all updated in front of our education. So we've been really pushing, our, Becca and I in the back, have really been pushing education and training. So if you follow me on Facebook, you see that we're everywhere. We are working closer with Consumers Energy, so we'll be in Jackson this week and Lansing. Um, we work with Eaton. Um, we actually are probably going to be doing something with the Detroit Pistons. Um, we're also going to Flint, so Kearsley High School in Flint had some restructuring issues. So they wanted a full diversity and inclusion, so I'll be there Monday. Um, Jackson, Flint, Ann Arbor, we're kind of all over the place now. So if you know organizations, companies, churches, anyone that wants either diversity and inclusion or an LGBT training, ours are curricula based. We're working with all the major hospitals in the area from St. John's to Beaumont. Um, so let us know we can come. It is fee for service, but if they don't have any money, we won't charge them, and it does not change whether you pay or not. There's, it's not like if you don't pay, you get 30 minutes. So it's a two-hour training or a four-hour training. Um, so if you know people, give us their information. Um, we've trained, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you know about how many and the round number? This year, I would say, I don't have it updated this month, but I would say like 1,500. So 1,500 people in this year one presenter, and so we've, we've done that many. So when we think about impact, it's these people are leaders and administrators, whether they're CEOs of companies or they're frontline staff. And so we work with anyone. We're working with uh, six of the seven major medical schools in Michigan. Um, and I think the only one we don't work with is like CMU because they're really far away. Um, but we work with anyone else. We work with Michigan State, C a DO, MD program, both are, um, for Wayne State, so we're working with all of them. Um, we're really pushing a lot of health initiatives because we're finding that that's where people, and 
you take a look at our gallery space, Transcend the Binary talked about how trans and gender non-conforming people all, always have issues in the healthcare system. And so we're trying to decrease that, um, but we're also going into employment spaces and corporations to change their policy and procedures on a macro and micro scale. So if you know people or you're a part of an agency, come to us and we'll help you and help them navigate how to be better for inclusivity. Anything else? Ever. Go ahead. Just real quick, um, it really has nothing to do with development, but it has the center to hold. Pay attention in the next couple of weeks and we'll share it on social media, but we are planning between now and what would be October 6th, whatever 30 days from election day, All right. we're holding days here that you can sign for so we're, we'll share that. We're kind of, kind of working it all out. Beth and I, and Ellen has done that before too. So we have a meeting on Friday. But while we can't support and endorse any you know party or candidates or proposals, we can strongly encourage people to make sure they vote. Mm -hmm. So once we get it out, if you're already registered to vote, please let people know though that if they're not to come here, and they don't have to live in Ferndale, but it can be county specific. And we're going to look out to see if it could also be like, does it just have to be open?
pretty excited about that. And they work in like Kalamazoo a lot, and they work with the Grand, or Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, because they work at the Grand Rapids Pride Center there, and so they wanted to push it here because of Detroit being such a big space for immigrants. But aren't they, their, their, their center is called the Village. Yeah, yeah, they have a few centers, but yeah, they're gonna have hours here. And then, and even though they have hours here, it might take place way outside of here. They, they can come to you, and they'll figure it out from there. Any other questions? We are gonna be putting sharps containers in our bathrooms. Um, that our sharps containers were given to us by Ferndale Family Pharmacy, who's been helping us a lot. Um, so people who need to deposit their sharps, there'll be a sharps container in all of the bathrooms, um, and then we'll be making sure to, to dump that, or we'll give to them each month. Go ahead. Just a big one. Okay, I was to a meeting today, and it was brought up again about the eight mile divide. Yes. What? Is that Mason's doing to try to yeah. get rid of that? So our focus, <clears throat> in, so for everyone who may not know, there's an eight mile divide that has happened, not just with LGBT people, but with Detroit period. When we were talking about the race, you're talking about poverty, everything from eight miles starts Detroit. And there's a lot of organizations that say that they're working in Detroit, but they don't. So Affirmations believes in breaking down all barriers, not just the eight mile divide. But specifically, that's why we've increased our work with Ruth Ellis, with LGBT, or with Ruth Ellis, LGBT Detroit, Equality Michigan. Um, and not by increased work, we meet with them often. We're figuring out what programs, we're joining in some of the programs, because we know that our clients and our guests are from everywhere. So we are more out in the community than we've ever been, whether it's not just in Detroit, but also like in Ann Arbor and Jackson at the Prides that they have in Flint Pride. So our work is to do community outreach work and let people know that no matter where you live at, Affirmations can serve you. So it's really intentional outreach and organization with other communities that actually are housed in Detroit. Does that, do we do anything, think we do anything else? Have they ever reached out or done any work with Hannon House? Yeah, so absolutely. So I've been working with, um, I, just, we, I just talked to her at the Pistons game. She was at the Pistons meeting, is it Pat? Pat? Yeah, so I talked to Pat. Pat and I are gonna have a meeting in the next couple of weeks, and she's someone I'm gonna reach out to about the senior um, appreciation day. But yeah, we are working with Hannon House, we're working with the Detroit elders, so we're talking with Cornelius, we're talking with Pat, we're doing, yeah, that is something we're very serious about. Which is also why we, Henry Ford Village, thank them, are gonna be part of the sponsors for the senior day. So not just, working with people programming, but working with different funders to make these programs happen. Yeah, we, and we also, when Wrigley's Pharmacy, who does lots of work in Detroit, when they have their community barbecues, we go and volunteer, we go and do services there, and vice versa. So we're, we're really trying to do better with our programming and partnership, because that's where people see affirmations. It's not always just the admin and stuff, it's actually like on the ground. But that's something we're serious about. How is LGBT Detroit working with affirmations? Well, actually, LGBT Detroit is working with affirmations really strongly. So we are we're one of the sponsors for the Pride. Not only do we help sponsor Hotter Than July Pride, but we also sponsored the ball that was put on at Hotter Than July, which saw about 200 LGBT people of color that came. Um, we're working with them on other matters, so we work with them through Creating Change. Danny is, we see Danny almost every other couple of weeks. Um, we're doing programming with them as well. They're kind of going through some strategic uh, planning process right now, but we are working with them on different programmings to share resources. I meet with Curtis probably once every couple of months, and we, we kind of know what's going on, but we are supporting each other. Anyone else? Good question. I wish they had a better place to meet over there, though. Their rooms are small. They are. I can say that they also just purchased the other part of the building and they're waiting to renovate it, which it opens it up. They also have this like stage in the back that we're going to try to work with them to do programming, like maybe an open mic night or do something, a joint partnership event, um, because their backstage area is really cool. But they're old dentist office, so that's why the rooms are so small. But they are, but they do have the space next door now and they're trying to renovate it to do bigger. Um, concerts and meetings and, and events. Any qu other questions? Are you 
sure. Anything we didn't cover? Okay, so that's really all that we have. Um, would the board like to say anything to the community? No, I just uh, would like to reiterate what was said at the last board meeting, which is basically that we're really encouraged by the community um, engagement um, that we've seen over the last couple of months. This is exactly what the center is about. This is what Jack is kind of bylaw um, and communication that we, that we encourage um, between the community, um, the staff, through the, and, and, the, and the board members through um, the board meetings every other month, and then through the command the community chat um, um, uh, meetings as well. So on behalf of the board, I want to thank the community um, for engaging us in this dialogue. And of course, thank you, Liliana and her staff for the leadership that, that she has taken on um, the last couple of months and making sure that um, Affirmation continues to be a strong organization. So thank you. If you all, because I know some people are uncomfortable asking their questions out loud, and that's fine. If you all want to email me questions that I can get back with you, or if your questions might be a board question, so Mike and I might chat about it and then get back with you. My email is lreyes at goaffirmations.org. Please email me. Um, no matter when, if you just have a question, comment, concern, even if it's not to me, I can get it filtered to who you want it to. Always know that there's an open line of communication between the community and the staff and the board. And so these are easier spaces because everyone's in the same room. But if you have people or you think about something when you leave, never think that you have to wait till the next community check. You can always email us, stop me in the hallway. I'm here almost every day. Talk to me and we can, we'll chat and make sure that any of your concerns we address them. We may not be able to fix all of them, but we'll definitely listen and try our best. Anything else? Go ahead. Yeah, this isn't a question, it's just a comment. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that uh, one of the prizes for the Golden Girls with the baseball is going to be Friday at Tiger Stadium. Uh -huh. And, and um, I've got a couple of friends I'm going down with, and, and I thought it was very good for the very fact that. Well, besides the t-shirt, they are supporting some LGTV charities yes. with your ticket of, with the price of a ticket. Yes. And I thought that is something we're supporting. Because yes. I just read an article just recently that the, uh, the New York Yankees are going to have like their own, their first Pride Day. Really? I think it's, I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year. Oh. Uh, so, so that's coming up too, but I thought, just to mention it. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Katie and I went to the Detroit Pistons last week. And we're going to be working with them, the LGBT Chamber of Commerce, and most other LGBT agencies like Ferndale Pride, um, to and he flag to talk about uh, LGBT Pride Night, but then other ways that we can be invested in them. And so our biggest thing was, let us train you and all the people that work with you. Um, but we are definitely keeping them on the right track, so they're not just like creating it and then like come to it. So we are having lots of dialogue with the, with the Detroit Pistons. But thank you for the Detroit Tigers. I didn't even know that. The game is next Wednesday. Okay. The only reason I really, really know that is so, sorry, you're all learning more about me than you know because I have other cops. that um, Sing Out Detroit, which is an LGBT uh, chorus. Mm -hmm. uh, the next concert is December uh, 9th. Uh, it's on a Sunday at 3 p.m. at Ferndale High School. And if you attend, you'll see this lovely face right here. <laughs> um, you, if you didn't get a chance, some of the uh, SKK members were at the uh, 
the concert for their 10th anniversary in June. Uh, it was a great, great concert. I, I had my solo debut there. Um, and so please come out. Um, uh, last night we had auditions uh, for this next concert that's coming up. We got some great sounding folks coming. So I'd like to see more of the community come out. Uh, it was the largest uh, attendance at the 10 year anniversary. Um, and that was great to see. And I'm, I'm actually a new member. Uh, and now I, <laughs> I was contemplating whether I was gonna stay and they said, no, you're not going anywhere. We're gonna put you on the board. So now I'm a board member. <laughs> And so I have no choice, I gotta stay. And send us a flyer and we can help. So if, if you can send it electronically, if you can't, you can just print it on and we can push it out on social media too. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, the Phyllis would say they just would like to say that I've been with Senior Coffee Patch for about three years and in the past um, several months, it's been particularly since you've been the interim executive director, we are feeling the love like never before and it, we're very appreciative. We love and you. We, we're excited about what's going on in the community. So thank, thank you. you. And thank you all. You all are so awesome. Thank you. And also, um, I, I do believe, and, and Rosemary and I talk whenever, I, I do believe in being open to community members. So if there's a question, a comment, a concern, please come to me and we can chat about it. We cannot do anything about questions, comments, or concerns if they're never vocal. They're just sitting in your head, there's nothing we can do. And then you're holding us to an expectation that we have no clue that you're holding us to. So definitely reach out to us, talk to us. Even if you think it's an uncomfortable conversation, write it in a note. Don't worry, I'm used to difficult conversations. We just really want to hear your voice. And so get this, if you're not an email person, come chat with me, I give you my phone number. I, I want to make sure that you know that there's never a, a cease in communication Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you have something else? Go ahead. I, I just want to say I concur with Rosemary uh, about you, I, I, and I hope you stay the executive director. Thank you. Um, uh, it has been definitely a better environment since you've been in charge, and I want that known. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. If there's nothing else, thank you so much for coming. Definitely check us out on our website. Kyle does a great job on social media, lots of social media, the YouTube page. Um, 